Hello, this is Sean Taylor, Field Application Scientist Manager for BioRad in Canada, and I'd like to demonstrate now how to perform densitometric analysis of gel or blot images using ImageLab software. So what we have before us here is a file that contains a 1 and 2 dilution series of a protein lysate diluted down from about 60 micrograms loading in 1 and 2, so 30, 15, 7.5, all the way down to 6 to the 6th lane. And we're going to try and quantify using ImageLab the density of these more prominent bands that we see here and maybe a less prominent band here. So to do densitometric analysis with the software, you use these toolbars. So you have a toolbox on the side here. And I'm only going to demonstrate a couple of the tools in this module just to focus in on densitometric analysis. So it starts with the image tools. And the image tools are used strictly to straighten an image or to rotate or flip the image vertically, horizontally. The custom rotate tool is quite useful, um, especially if you've um, not laid your blot in the imager exactly straight. <clears throat> so you can, you can, if your blot happens to be kind of off center, then you can use the custom rotate tool to center it. So you align the tool, the compass, in the orientation of the image. So you can see I'm trying to align the compass so it goes along the axis here of these bands and then the axis of the lane. And all the tools in the software tell you here on the left side how to manipulate the tool. So now I'm going to right click and click rotate and now I'm back to a straightened image. You can also, we also have undo and redo uh, buttons in case you've feel like a mistake has been made so I can undo back to where I was before or redo to where I was uh, after manipulating uh, the image using image tools. So the next step in the process, once you've made the image as straight as possible in the field of view, is <clears throat> to click on the lane and band tool. So lane and band. We start by defining the lanes in a given image. So we click on lanes, and then I usually choose manual to select lanes. So we have six lanes in this particular image. So we can click on those six lanes. We click six here, click OK. And now we adjust the lanes. So what I'm doing now is I'm adjusting the lanes so that they are aligned to the top of each lane but you can see this gel is a little bit splayed out so I can then click adjust frame if I need to and I can adjust the frame using these anchors so I'm just moving the lanes so that they're more or less adjusted now, there's another tool to be able to adjust the width of the lanes because these bands need to be inside the lane markers. So what we can do is click in the band tool and then click back into the lane tool. And now we have this new tool. So you can click on individual lanes by holding the control button or you can click on one lane, hold the shift button, click on the last lane and it selects all the lanes in between. It's kind of like working with Excel when you're trying to select multiple cells. Then any of these anchors that are on the side of the lane, as so long as all the lanes are selected, it will adjust them all at the same time. So if I click on an anchor on the side of a lane, the width of that lane can be dragged larger and it adjusts the width of all the other lanes. You can also click on an individual lane if you wish and just adjust it slightly if you need to. So now I've adjusted all my lanes to the correct width and the next step in the process is to select bands. So I'm going to click on the band tool and I'm going to add bands. Now you can also use the auto detect to detect bands and the way the auto detect tool will work is if you look at the image in three dimensions, auto detect will actually look at the contour map of the density of the band. So this is this is how the software views an image in three dimensions. And the the detect band tool will try to determine where 
the density of a band rises and falls to select the right band width, as you see here. If you have um, a blot or gel image that has a lot of bands that you're, that you're not interested in quantifying, where you're only interested in quantifying certain bands, I recommend just use the add band tool. But if, if you're working with a blot where you, where you have a nice specific antibody and one band, then the detect band tool might work much better. So if we click add, we can add bands by just clicking over the band. So that's what I'm doing here, just mousing across. And I'll do that other lower set of bands as well. Now, regardless of whether you've chosen the add or detect bands, I recommend always when you're finished selecting lanes and, and clicking on bands, just shrink down this screen a little bit, move it over to the side of the image lab working space, and then click on the lane profile tool. Always use the lane profile tool after selecting lanes and bands because this tool is extremely, extremely useful in assessing if you've selected the correct band and lane widths. So I'll usually, when I'm using the lane profile tool, I'll click back in the lane tab here to avoid adding more bands in my, in my blot. And then I'll, I'll go to the lane one. And what I see is the profile of that three-dimensional view of lane one. So if I click again on the three-dimensional view, what we see, as you can see here, is the three-dimensional view, but if I, if I sort of hold the view right directly in front of me, this pattern of peaks looks very similar to here because the lane profile is essentially a cut through this lane. So we can kind of get a, a nice view of the, of the width of the bands in two dimensions here. So what I can do now with these blue bars at the bottom, when I, when I mouse over to one of the bars, I get a double arrow. And if I click on that, I can drag it to select exactly the correct bandwidth. So you can see here, there is a little band beside this band and it rep it's represented in the lane profile tool as a shoulder. So I've selected just the band that I'm interested in to get the correct density. Same thing with the next band, which is this band here. Now I can go, I can either click in a lane to see the next lane of the lane profile tool, or I can use this tool here to go through each lane one at a time. So what I'm looking for is that I've selected the correct um, width of my bands by coloring in the peak that, that corresponds to the bandwidth. So that lane looks good. This lane looks okay, lane three. Lane four, definitely there's a problem with this particular band, so I've selected it properly. I might want to move this over a little bit as well. And lane five looks good. Lane six, again, I might want to make an adjustment. Now, as you have lanes that have lower and lower signal to noise, you can see that the peaks become very small with respect to the background, which is all this gray that's underneath. And this background is represented um, by, uh, if I go in the lane profile tool, by all of this that you see here. So all of, all of this here is background, which is represented here. So you want to make sure that you're not inc incorporating background into the density of the bands that you're interested in. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So if I wanted to see these bands without the background, I can click here in the lane profile tool to exclude the background so I can get a better view of where my peaks are and so on. So this is just to, you know, if you want to have a view of your data without background um, inc incorporated in the view. So now we, we have selected our, our, our width of the bands properly using these blue bars, but also the, we want to also make sure we get the correct background subtracted. And the other advantage of the lane profile tool is that you have that background subtraction uh, feature right here at the bottom of the tool. So if I drag this bar with my mouse all the way to none, you can see now that I'm going to be incorporating a whole bunch of background into these tiny peaks, which would make the data completely artifactual in the end. I want to make sure that I exclude all this background from these, from these from these bands because the only relevant data is the data that rises above the background. So what you do is 
I usually will, will choose the lane that has the lowest signal to noise. And then I will start at none in the lane profile tool and then gradually move the mouse. And then what I'm looking at is this blue line here until it until the blue line is at a level where it cuts the peaks between the valleys of the peaks. So you can see as I drag this over, that blue line will go up closer until I'm at a point where, so here I'm at around 6.5 for this disc size and I'm cutting the peaks between the valleys. So that's pretty good. And then I can apply this background level to all the lanes. So if I click on that apply to all lanes, then I can scroll back through the lanes to make sure that my that my peaks are cut between the valleys between the peaks. So that's, that's what I'm checking to make sure. So that valley and that valley, this valley and this valley, and so on. So it looks pretty good so far. Yep, I'm quite pleased with that. And same thing here. So cutting between the valleys of the peaks. So that's pretty good. So then and you want to be careful not to apply too much background, otherwise you'll go into the peaks. So if I go all the way to max, if I go to, for example, the lowest signal to noise, and I click on maximum, I'm actually taking away density now that's relevant. So I'm going to apply that background of around six, click apply to all lanes, and now I'm cutting between the valleys. So I'm taking the peak that rises above all of the background. For my for my relevant bands and i want to make sure i'm being consistent with that so i always go back and check to make sure the background was properly subtracted so now i've done my background subtraction i've done my my, my bandwidth i've selected my lanes so i'm ready to i'm ready to analyze my data so i'm going to turn off the lane profile tool and i can look now at my data now you might also want at this point to label the lanes and you can do that here under image info. So if you click on image info on, under notes, you can then add lane labels. Now this is only after you've defined the lanes and bands. The, this, the, this lane label tool will not appear until you've done the lanes and bands. But now I've, now I've applied labels to my lanes. So that, that permits me to easily see what I've loaded. So now I'm going to click on the analysis table. The analysis table is where all the data is is warehoused. So the analysis table also has some little tools on uh, above the analysis table so you can show or not show data in the analysis table. This is to orient the table and when the software is first loaded onto a computer the table is in this orientation where you see um, all the data for each lane kind of going horizontally across a so lane two, lane three, and so on. I personally prefer the vertical view. So I always click on this and, and this only needs to be clicked on the first time you launch the software if you prefer this view. And then if you don't click on this again, every time you open the software, it will be in the table will be in this, in this orientation. So what we have here are the lane numbers which are numbered here. Band number, bands are numbered that you selected in each lane from top to bottom. So this is band one, this is band two, and the next band would be band three. So, so that's how band numbers are labeled. Um, molecular weight will be in another teaching module on the software. Relative front is the distance from the top of a lane to the band. And adjusted volume is the background subtracted volume. So this is, this is the data that would be of interest when doing the calculations, when wanting to do uh, differential densitometric analysis. Volume is the non-background subtracted volume, and I'll, and I'll explain how to contrast between these two things soon. And then you have band percent and lane percent. The band percent is the percent of the adjusted volume of the selected band, of this band, relative to the other selected bands in the lane. So, so this band represents 82% of the density of the sum of these two values. And 17% represents this divided by the sum of these two values. Lane percent is again the adjusted volume of this band relative to all the other bands after background subtraction in the lane. So lane percent would be more of a percent purity band percent would be more of a ratio of densities between selected bands. 
So if we look at the, vol at the adjusted volume, and bearing in mind that this was a one in two dilution series, you can see that, and if we want to compare just band one going across all these lanes, we'd compare band one in each of these lanes here. So band one, as we can see, went from 61 million to 33 to 17 to about 10 to about 6 to about 2.5. So that's pretty much a 1 in 2 decrease going all the way down from lane 1 to lane 6. For the second band that we selected, which was a less intense band, again, it's very consistently uh, going down by a factor of 1 in 2, 13 to 7 to 3.9, to about 2.3, to 1, to about 0.8. That's very consistent, so very nice results once we've selected the correct bandwidth and background subtraction properly. Let's contrast that data that we saw in adjusted volume to data where the background was not subtracted. And you can see it's a very significant difference. So 156 to 94 is, is, is not exactly 1 and 2, but then 94 to 65 is definitely not 1 and 2. And, and after that, starting in lane 3, all the density values are very, very similar. So, so we really are not getting very, con very consistent or precise results vis-a-vis -vis the 1 and 2 dilution that we did. It's even worse for the, for the uh, lower expressed band here because the signal to noise is, is much lower. So 63 to 36 is about one and two, but then from there, we go from 36, we go up to 40, down to 30, to 20, and then up to 27. So there's no consistent one and two difference between those bands without background subtraction. So background subtraction becomes very important when you work with the software. And ImageLab with the Lane Profile tool permits you to do this very effectively and easily. So the only other thing we need to do now is basically get the data out of the software into an Excel spreadsheet if we want to do further calculations for densitometric analysis. And you do that with this tool here. You can either copy the analysis table and paste it in Excel, or you can just click here, export analysis table to Excel. So I'm going to click on export analysis table to Excel. And if I then open Excel, my data is already ported into Excel in numeric format. So very, very easy to do that. I have all my, my data that was in the analysis table already nicely entered into Excel for me to use um, for further calculations. The other thing you might want to do, so if I click back into ImageLab, you might want to actually export the image into Excel as well. And to do that, you use, first of all, I would want to adjust this image before putting it into Excel. And there's a tool right here to do this, Display Gel Options. Usually with Display Gel Options, I want to show certain things in my um, image after analysis. So I typically don't want to show uh, bands, lanes, or lane frames. But I do want to show lane labels, which are up here. Um, I would show molecular weight if I, if I perform molecular weight analysis. And I do want to show band number for all the lanes. So if I click there, now I have a nicely labeled image for the selected bands that I wanted to do densitometric analysis with. So now what I'll do is I'll export this um, into a image file. So file, export for publication. Just bear in mind that anything that you're exporting is the actual image that you're viewing. So if you don't want to view any of these markings on the image, you could click again on the, on the um, Display Gel Options tool and hide everything. I'm not going to do that for this, for this particular image. So File, Export for Publication. I usually choose 600 DPI resolution for my exported images. Click Export. And then I can export my image as whatever name I wish, as TIFF or JPEG or B B BMP or PNG files. So I'm gonna export as a JPEG for this purpose on my desktop. So I've saved that image. So then in Excel, obviously I can insert the picture, which I will do from my desktop. And I have the picture of my image 
from Image Lab software by lane number and band number to correspond to the data that I exported by lane number and by band number. So now we have essentially taken the image data and converted it into numeric data along with the captured image result from the analysis that we performed. So I hope that this was useful and this concludes the Densitometric Analysis module of ImageLab software.